Bebop, that's a strange word sometimes, too. He's a, he was a musician. When the music changed, they just called it Bebop. But uh, Thelonious was like a founder. He was a f like, the, he laid down the foundation. He was the piano player. Um, a lot of his compositions is classics now. <laughs> saw himself as modern. He liked to use the word modern, a modern jazz player. Blacks who were listening to that music saw an expression of independence and pride and strength. Thelonious Monk just represented that, the earliest example of the black revolution, of a black uh, uprising, in a sense, was in music, was in the bebop period, where the musicians weren't obviously trying to please an audience, but they were playing their music, their way. It was a real independent uh, expression. <laughs> gathered that his music at the time was was uh, unorthodox it wasn't popular uh, that his records really weren't selling he was more an underground figure he was also a man about whom uh, stories about unreliability were circulating live television is the scariest medium of all because it's millions of people if you're going to act silly or you're going to be late, you're not going to show up, it's going to be a glaring omission. And uh, I just remember being very, very nervous. He sat down and he played. And I was aware of, of a real professional. There he is. He's, what's there to be nervous about? He's there.
remember though, on the way back, he was a little pissed off. I bet Count Basie. What did he say? He, he said, oh, Count Basie kept looking at him, or look, looking at him while he was playing. He was at the piano. And that somehow bothered him. And he said, well, you know, next time he plays somewhere, I'm going to look at him. <laughs> to be employed in New York, you needed a police card or cabaret card. If I decided I wanted to be a musician, I'd have to go to the police, put my fingerprints down, and get my card. And that card would be in my possession until such time as I would commit a crime. Then that card would be removed. He had lost his. His friend Bud Powell was leaving town and asked him to drive with him to the airport. They made a stop, and uh, Bud Powell got out, got back in with some drugs, so the cops saw whatever he had in their hands flying out the window. Who threw it out? Thelonious Monk. And so he was arrested and convicted and got, um, I think, 90 days. He said he never used he was not guilty at that time. The police in those days, and we're talking about the 50s, maybe it started even earlier, their favorite targets seemed to be jazz musicians. I mean, there were some cities that were outright unfriendly, and I think that bothered him. So he'd ra rather stay in New York. It was during that period, in the process of getting his car, that I found this little bar on Third Avenue called the Five Spot. going to uh, appear there for five, six months, as long as it, uh, you know, as long as crowds were coming in. And, w and we did that. The response was staggering. The pressure's been building all these years, and suddenly you take it off and all that stuff comes out. And that's what you felt, that's how he played. He was just great. came love what they heard. I felt Thelonious was vindicated because all this time he had been an artist that had never had his due in terms of recognition. And here was the beginning of that, that changing. There were phone calls for engagements. Of course, we were now in a lucky position to say we don't go out of town right now. <laughs> well, before this engagement, we would have considered anything. <laughs> Oh, that's the longest one. He's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> 